I, I think the only thing that honestly saved my life was I didn't react or act like human. Hello everyone, welcome back to Sketching Encounters. I have with me today a gentleman by the name of Jesse and he's going to share with you his experience that he had. Hi Jesse. Hi. So, thank you Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Would you just tell everyone um, just a little bit about yourself and uh, and then you can just launch right into um, and you can also tell a little bit about, like, what your understanding was. I mean, did, did you know these these beings were out there? Did you have some kind of understanding of them before you had this incredible encounter? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as you said, my name is Jesse. I am a, a youth pastor in Tennessee. I have a one-year-old son who oh. is just my everything. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm happily married. Um, oh. And currently, I work as a stay-at-home father until he's old enough to go to school, and I can go back into ministry. That's fantastic! Yeah. What a what a I, blessing that is. <laughs> I mean, to get to raise your it. own kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a yeah, blessing. I, I enjoy it. Yeah. Um, so the encounter happened four or five years ago. A little bit of backstory was. I had gone to the doctor. Um, I was having a lot of medical issues at the time, and the doctor started throwing out the word cancer, um, which terrified me <laughs> uh, at that time. You know, I was 34, 35 years old. Uh, I'm 40 now, and it it, it terrified me. Um, so I decided to just uh, go up to the foothills. Um, I, I like to hike in my spare time. Um, I find it relaxing um, just to get out into nature. Um, so I decided to go hiking and I told my wife, hey, I'm going to get away for the day, uh, just me, so I can kind of wrap my head around everything that's going on in my life. Um, um, at the time, I had a 40-pound pit bull. <laughs> uh, she was a sweetheart. Um, she, she was my hiking buddy. Uh, she was not the best dog off leash but she didn't wander too far um she liked to chase deer um you know that that was that was a bit of a hassle with her um but she had on our hikes encountered bears and and wild boar and stuff like that and never showed any sign of fear never showed uh anything but just wanting to protect protect me um so we decided to uh, pack a bag, and I packed some water and some snacks for her. Um, I packed some Kool-Aid for me because I love Kool-Aid, <laughs> my, my daily drink. Um, <laughs> never grew out of that. Um, and a couple of pieces of fruit, a big golden delicious apple about the size of a softball and a banana. And we drove up for about, I'd say, a good two hours um, when we hit an area that was clearly an old logging road. Um, and we decided to take that logging road and drive up as far as we could before we would start our hike. Um, and up, up until this point, I mean, I had backpacked all over the state uh, by myself, been alone in the woods for weeks at a time. Um, you know, I, I was pretty good at, with the outdoors. <laughs> Um, I also decided, you know, because I know the area is prone to mountain lions, um, I decided to take my 45 with me on my hip. Um, no, don't ever want to shoot one. I, I, I don't, I don't want to kill a bear. I don't want to kill a mountain lion, but if it's me and my dog or it, 
uh, I'm, I'm going to choose me and my dog every right. time. Um, so we kept driving up this logging road and it just started getting too rough for my two wheel drive vehicle. Um, we made it over a couple of really big holes in the road. And, and I, I said, you know what, we're going to stop before we get stuck <laughs> before we get to a place where we can't turn around. So we, we parked <clears throat> and we got out and we started w just walking up the, the trail. Um, there was a couple of overgrown trees that had fallen down over the trail. You know, we, we made sure to cross them safely for snakes. There's, you know, a lot of a lot of venomous snakes out there, and that that can get you every time when you're when right. you're crossing the log. And can you can you describe the area that you are in? And this is in California, correct? Yeah, at the time this was in California. Uh, we a couple years ago moved out to Tennessee, um, but at the time it was uh, the Upper Sierra Nevada mountain range. Um, we were at the time living in an area of California called the Central Valley. So we were, we're up near Camp Edison and Edison Lake is where we were at. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. High up in the, <laughs> high up in the mountain. Um, and we just started hiking this trail, you know, uh, we probably walked for a couple miles. I, I you know, I, I don't really know how far I can travel in a walking speed um but you know we we hiked for about two and a half three hours um when my dog stopped dead in her tracks and she just would not go forward would not keep walking and that this wasn't like her um she's usually you know always 15 to 20 feet out in front of me when we'd hike um you know nose usually down to the ground just back and forth from side to side of the trail, just sniffing. But she stopped dead in her tracks and her tail immediately went between her legs and she immediately started to growl. And the only thing in front of us was a giant manzanita bush that stood about six, six and a half feet tall. And I was thinking, okay, maybe it's a bear. <laughs> maybe it's a you know mountain lion or a wild wild boar or something like that mm -hmm. um but I, I'd, I'd never seen her react like this to, to an animal like that um normally she was always more curious and and only would growl or bark if something got too close and and she definitely was afraid and i got up next to her and this figure stands up from behind this bush and I'm looking at it in complete shock. I don't know what I'm looking at. Um, you know, we've all seen Harry and the Hendersons. <laughs> uh, we all, you know, love that movie from our childhood. Um, but those things don't exist, right? <laughs> that, at least that's not what we think we know. And this is, isn't a bear and it's not a person, um, but I don't know what I'm looking at. So at this point, <clears throat> I'm staring at it, it's staring at me and I'm just racking my brain with trying to come up with a, an answer for what I'm seeing. Is, is this a person in a costume? It's too big to be a person in a costume. Uh, I've never seen a costume look that good. Um, also, why would you have a costume like that <clears throat> in the middle of nowhere, in the mountains? You, you just wouldn't. <clears throat> Did I stumble on a movie set? You know, no. <laughs> there, you know, usually there's security and and things like that to keep you from just stumbling into a set. Right. Okay. Just trying to figure out what I'm looking at, and and I'm just admiring the, this figure in front of me um clearly a female um and and i will say and it, it i know it's going to sound weird but she was kind of attractive in in a weird way her face yeah um just i know that sounds weird <laughs> no 
actually it doesn't. And how far away were you from her? About 15 feet. Wow. And they are, is she is on the right of the trail or on the left of the trail? Uh, she, she was on the right side of the trail as my right side yeah. of the trail uphill. And I couldn't really figure out. I'm clearly either hallucinating or this thing is real. And I'm not hallucinating because my dog's reacting to it. Right. Okay. So what am I looking at? And at this point, <clears throat> you know, I would say it, it was a good minute of us just looking at each other. And, and she was kind of a, had a shocked expression on her face of she was not sure why I was there. And I was shocked because I didn't know what you were and why you were there. Yeah. And that's when my dog alerted me to something up the trail and to the left and I did not want to look away from what was in front of me because whatever is up the trail isn't obviously what's in front of me um, but she wouldn't look away from the female standing there <clears throat> for just nothing yeah so I <clears throat> look up the trail to the left and about a hundred yards up the hill is a large black figure, jet black. I mean, large, <laughs> biggest thing I've ever seen. Like in your life. In my life, you know, um, I've traveled the world. You know, my parents were missionaries. We've been all over the place. Um, I've, I've, I've ridden elephants. This thing was massive for, for being on two legs. It was massive. And it started to come towards us. And at this point, I'm terrified. It, it's obviously aggressive because it, it's not turning and running. And this large figure starts to pick up speed. And at this point, the only thing I can think to do is scoop up my dog and curl into a fetal position. Um, I don't know what its intention is. Um, I, all I know is it's too, too big and there's two of them now and my dog can't fight off two things at once. And I don't want to shoot a person. If this is a person, I don't want to shoot it. And I'm just clenched holding my dog as tightly as I can. And I can feel the football. And the football stopped, and I want to look. <laughs> At this point, I'm thinking it's going to snatch me up. Something's going to snatch me up, and, and, and it's going to be a life or death situation. And I didn't know what to do at this point. Um, I was shaking. At this point, my dog had peed herself out of fear, um, what she has never done in her life. Um, I literally peed myself out of fear, um, which I've never done in my life either. Um, just in shock. I don't know what to do. Um, how did I end up in this situation? And I opened my eyes and there's nothing next to me. But the footfalls clearly felt like it was right on top of us. But there's nothing next to me. So I, I try to switch positions a little bit so that way I can look back towards that bush. And my dog gets loose and beelines it back down the trail. She, oh. she, she left me. She left oh me for dead. Um, <clears throat> and I can hear something breathing. And it... It was terrifying. That's, I mean, I don't know how to explain it other than terrifying. And I build up enough courage to look towards that bush. And now there's two creatures. 
One is extremely tall, extremely wide, and jet black. And then there's the female, <laughs> who in her own right was massive. And was there was was there a big height difference between the two of them? Uh, I I would say that she was probably a good three feet shorter than he was. And that shocked me because later when I, when I explained that the bush was, <clears throat> you know, six and a half feet tall and, and she towered over that bush, Wow! you know, made her almost eight feet tall and whatever was standing next to her was dwarfed her, dwarfed that bush. <laughs> I, I just, what is this? Then? It's, not, it's not a human. Humans don't get this big. You know, it, I, gorillas aren't even this big. What is this? And at this point, I'm thinking, it hasn't tried to snatch me up. You're, you're safe for the moment. Make friends with it. Jane Goodall, the situation, you know? Um, and, the, and the only thought I have is, <clears throat> hey, you still have an apple in your backpack. Maybe if you feed it, they'll let you go. So I started to reach back with my right hand. And when my hand got close to my 45 pistol, I started to hear a growl. Oh my gosh. And that, that, that terrified me because that told me it know it knows what a gun is. Wow. It recognized that as a weapon or as something dangerous, something to be afraid of. It didn't, it wasn't growling up until I got near my gun and, and I stopped and then I started to reach further back and grab the apple out of the side pocket of my bag. And I, once he saw that I didn't have a weapon in my hand, the growling stopped. He still wasn't happy, but he he, he at least knew I wasn't going to yeah. try to shoot him. And I didn't, I sure as heck wasn't going to try to walk the apple over there to him. So I sort of lobbed it towards them. And she bent down. An arm came out from behind the bush, grabs this apple. She stands back up and she puts this whole thing in her mouth and closes her mouth around it. Wow. Takes a couple of bites and then swallows. That, that, that's a that's a apple the size of a softball. That's a big <laughs> <mouth>. <laughs> wow. And at that moment, <clears throat> I, I at that time I thought it was a laugh. Um, but the more I've thought about it, 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 it sounded like a chuff when I lobbed that apple towards him because he, he wouldn't take his eyes off me. He went, oh. And I, I was like, is he laughing at me? I, I, I think at that moment, his adrenaline was starting to settle down when he realized that I was not a threat. And they stood there for probably another 30 seconds. And I, I looked him up and down. Um, he was terrifying. He, looking at him, made me feel like I was going to die instantly. He, he, he terrified me. Um, with, with the female, I didn't, I didn't get that. I, I got curiosity. I got in, an inquisitiveness from her. Um, him, he he wanted nothing to do with me, and and I didn't I didn't want anything to do with him right. uh, at all. And then they turned and they walked away, and I I laid there in a puddle of my own urine for wow. for about two minutes until the shaking subsided enough to to try to stand up. And I, the crazy part is, is when they walked off, I couldn't hear them. I couldn't feel the footfalls anymore. 
which means that when he was running towards us, he was trying to be loud. He was trying to show his dominance. Yeah. Now he was quiet when they were walking away, and they, they pretty much vanished into the woods. I mean, I didn't dare go after him because yeah. <laughs> at this point I, I had had enough, um, but I, I was still curious as to the bush. So I had built up enough energy to get up off on my feet and walk towards this bush, and I walk around behind it, and me standing at five foot eight couldn't see over the top of the bush. Um, it was a good six inches taller than me. And and I said, oh, she was a big woman. Like, that, that bush was at least three and a half feet wide, and, and I could disappear behind it. Right. And then I noticed that there's something on the ground and my heart sinks and I bend down to look at it and there's a puddle in the dirt and it's blood. And at this point I go, oh, I interrupted her eating something, but why isn't there feathers? Why isn't there fur? Why is there just a small silver dollar sized puddle of blood in one spot? And next thing I know, I'm, I'm, I start hearing a rustle in the bushes and I immediately freeze thinking they're coming back to kill me. Yeah. And out pops my dog, tail up in the air, wiggling it back and forth, <laughs> happy go lucky. And, and, you know, I, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I kind of cussed at her a couple of times, <laughs> you know, uh, told her she wasn't getting dinner tonight because <laughs> she left me for dead, um, walked back to the, to my vehicle and, and I don't remember the drive home. I, I, I don't remember it at all. Uh, I do remember getting home, locking myself in the bathroom and, sitting underneath the shower with the water on as hot as it could be fully closed, uh, just in shock. I, I didn't know what to do. Um, wow. I, I will say it took a lot of coaxing from my wife to, to open up about it. Um, she, she said, maybe I should go talk to someone about it. I tried. I got laughed out of a, a, a psychiatrist's office. When I told them what happened, um, they made me feel like I was crazy. I'm so sorry. I, I wasn't. I know what I saw. I know that they weren't people as we are people. <laughs> I know that they weren't an animal as other animals in the forest. They were something completely different. Um, and at that moment... Um, I had vowed that I would never go camping alone in the woods again. Um, I would never go backpacking again. Um, because if these things are in the woods, I don't want to be in the woods after dark. Um, yeah. And I haven't. <laughs> I've been afraid yeah. to go camping in the woods ever since. Um, you know, if, if there's a couple of us, I'll go. But by myself, I'll, I'll never do that again. I'll never hike by myself again. Um, it just, it, it ruined it. <laughs> it ruined it for me. Right. Right. Did you, when you were looking, okay, so I've got, I have so many questions. When you first saw her, she's standing behind that bush, mm -hmm. but you could see her head, like head and shoulders are kind of over it. I could, I could see from, uh, just under her, I, I would say breast line. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, and it wasn't until they had turned to walk away that I, I saw the full fullness of her. Yeah. And she she was impressive. <laughs> she, how much was, how much do you think that she would weigh if you could I know you're just guessing, obviously, but I, I'd say she was five hundred pounds easy. And and, and she was not fat. 
No, no, not fat at all. She was uh, not not skinny, um, but she was she was muscular. She she was she was she was built like a a female powerlifter. So you could see the muscle structure underneath the the hair. Was would you say your hair was like thick hair, or was it thinner um, in some places? Than yeah. Others? So I I would say. She had thick hair in, in, in areas that I was surprised that it was thick and thin in areas that for something that lives outside, I could, I could see skin underneath the hair in, in certain mm -hmm. sections, which surprised me mm -hmm. uh, for something that lives in the high parts of California where, you know, it, it, it gets snow up there. <laughs> People ski up there. Right. So. She, what, she survived the wilderness. Which which parts were the thickest? Had the thickest hair on her? Um, around her her genital area was was real thick, um, and the top of her head, and then going almost like a ridge down her back was super thick. Um, she had she had a little bit thicker of hair on her forearms than she did on the rest of her body, but not nearly as thick as those areas. So you could see skin. And how about her face? Did her face have a lot of hair? No. Uh, so her hair on her face kind of ended where her chin started and and didn't start again until mid-forehead. So her face had no hair on it at all. Yeah. Uh, Just a little on the forehead, like a little... Um... Yeah, so... Kind of like how I would, as I would say, like peach fuzzy on her on the forehead. Forehead, a little, okay. A little bit of hair, but not not an, not enough to go. Oh, she's covered head to toe in hair. Right, right. And so when the male joined her, like I know, I know he he came from at least a, what a hundred yards away. About a hundred yards, yeah. And was he was he initially walking towards you guys, or was he running from the start? Could you tell? So when I first saw him, he was just standing there, and and I couldn't. It looked like a shadow. I couldn't tell if it was looking at us or looking away from us. And then it took two steps towards us, and that's when I realized it wasn't a shadow. And then it started to speed up. So it took two initial steps of, of walking pace. Um, and then mm. it covered the rest of the ground in seconds. Now the rest of that hundred yards in seconds. Yeah, yeah. In seconds. So you were still standing at that point and you dropped into the fetal position as he's running towards you guys. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Um, and did you drop I, down on your left side? Uh, I dropped down on my on my right side. Your right side, okay. Um, on top of the gun, on on top of the dog. Uh, my the back of my neck, that my back was face, facing her. Um, I, you know, I figured if if this thing's gonna grab me, um, I, I want to be able to grab my gun. So if if he's gonna grab me and I, I might break an arm, I break my left arm. So that way my right arm can still grab the gun. That is the, my thought process. I see. You know? Wow. And so he's, when you, when you do look up and you see that they're both there, he's standing on the other side of this bush. Is that correct? Correct. He's standing and on the other side of this bush uh, next to, but somewhat in front of her. Like and like he, he's protecting her, because and, and he's standing, he's facing you like straight on, like head on, head on facing me. Oof. And it, it, it he was standing in in a way that made me think that he would be able to be on top of me and snatch me up in a heartbeat. Like it 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 was an I'm ready pose, you know. Yeah. Not not a, not a oh I'm just standing here. You no, know, you. you he knew what he was doing. <laughs> yeah. And can you tell us what he looked like? Yeah. So he had jet black hair. Um, his skin tone was kind of like a charcoaly black. Mm -hmm. um, 
you could not see any any color in his eyes. His eyes were jet black. Uh, he had super broad shoulders. Um, I would say he was he was built like a, a world strongman competition competitor. Um, he had a big barrel chest. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he, he didn't have you know a flat ab muscly stomach. It, it, it was kind of a bigger stomach, um, but not not fat <laughs> by any means. You yeah. can see the muscles there. Um, massive hands, massive feet. Um, I, I swear his calves were bigger than my thighs. Um, he, he just, he was in a, a scary force, you know, he was impressive, but there's nothing in those mountains that, that would be able to fight him off, you know. How much do you think he would, he would weigh? He, he was twelve to fifteen hundred pounds easy. Oh my god! He, he, yeah, I mean, we get even our black bears in, in California max out at three fifty. So there, there's nothing, you know. We don't have grizzly bears. There's nothing in those woods that would be a threat to him. Now this male had kind of a special, had some special features. He did. He did. He, he had some deformities. Uh, that I thought were really interesting. Um, so on his right foot, he only had four toes instead of five. And on his left foot, he only had three toes. Um, and and they were kind of sprayed, splayed out, kind of like a bird's bird's foot on it on his left foot. It it was a weird deformity. Um, I don't know if it was a birth defect. Maybe from inbreeding, or maybe he got in a fight with another one of his species and had his toes bitten on. Like I, I, I don't know, but it it was definitely unique and and at the same time scary because if he can cover that much ground being yeah. injured, <laughs> <laughs> I don't stand a chance. Yeah. Uh, and looking at him, I I, I said. To myself, man, this guy could squat a semi truck. Like, it. If if I was in my car or in my truck, there would be no reason why he wouldn't be able to grab the bumper and just lift it up off the ground. Like he was massive. What kept going through my head is, oh well, you know, chimpanzees are about our size, and they're, you know, five to ten times stronger than a human. Sure. Gorillas are, are are one and a half times our size, and they're a hundred times our, our strength. What's this thing? This thing, what a thousand humans? Like how, how strong are they? Because he 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 was massive. Yeah. And and he he knew he was he was in charge. <laughs> yeah. And she knew he was in charge. Yeah. I will say when when he showed up. She stopped looking at me. Um, she just started looking down at the ground. And I will say her demeanor changed. Uh, instead of being a curious, inquisitive type of demeanor, uh, she became very timid. I think she was afraid of him as well. Yeah. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah. I wonder if she was... I wonder if she was hiding from him. Yeah. So, I mean, after having done, you know, after this encounter, I've, I've had a couple of minor encounters here and there uh, since then. Um, but I've done a lot of research. Uh, I'm, I'm fascinated now by, by the subject. Uh, I'm fascinated that science doesn't want answers. Mm -hmm. Not it's not that they can't get the answers; it's that they don't want the answers. Um, and you know, there are a few. There are a few scientists that have, you know, Dr. Jeff Meldrum and, right. and John Bindernagel and, and people like that that have been willing to face the ridicule to, yeah. to admit that there's something out there. Um, but enough scientists don't want to know and 
I don't understand why. Um, I, I have my opinions about it, but yeah, you know, it, it's it's now a fascination with me. I'm I'm obsessed with Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah. Or, or or as I like to call them, uh, I came up with a, a scientific name for them since science won't. Um, I call them Homo Gigas, uh, you know, which is giant humans. Right. Uh, because they they look human to me. They don't look like an ape. They don't act like an ape. They have too much intelligence. Um, you know, if if I was in Borneo or the the Congo and I happened to stumble upon a, a, some chimpanzee, I would have been mauled. You know, if, if they were any other animal, wild animal, I would have been attacked. Uh, it didn't attack me. And it yeah. obviously knew what my firearm was. Now, if if it was laying there, could he pick it up and work it? Probably not. But he at least knew that, oh, that's that thing that the hunters carry that kill things. Right. You know, he had, yeah. he had some intelligence to him that knew that when I got near it, it was a threat. And, and that impressed me. That yeah. it, it shocked me. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, you, you're thinking, oh, this is just a, this is just an ape, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's not, it's not an ape. They're not apes. Yeah. They're, they're too human-like to be apes. They don't yeah. have ape-like feet. They don't have ape-like features. They, they didn't have the mannerisms of apes, you know, they did not knuckle walk. They, right. they walked away on two feet. They're, they're not apes. When they when they walked away, how close together were they? Was he in the lead so, or was she behind? I was. I'm curious. So he he ended up in the in front of her, um, but she would walk about five paces back from him, and and he would just. It was weird. It. it he didn't walk in a straight line. He kind of did it kind of like a snake pattern as he walked. And eventually they got into some thick brush, brush that you, I looked at it and I said, how'd they get through that? First off, secondly, how'd they get through it without making any sound? So they didn't walk up the log logging road then. No, no, they, they, they did not. they, I, I don't know why it would have been an easier walk than, than walking up the actual hill itself, but they walked up the hill towards the ridge of the mountain. And and I knew that I, I ain't going after him. <laughs> yeah. Did did he ever turn around and look back at you or did she? Uh, he did not, but she, she kind of didn't, I wouldn't say stopped. I would say slowed a little bit and kind of, started to turn around and quickly snapped back and kept walking. I don't know if, if he made a noise. I don't know if, if he sensed something. Um, obviously, they're intelligent. And I believe they communicate, so he could have corrected her real quick, mm. marked something at her that snapped her back, but it, it was, he, you yeah. He dwarfed her. He he oh. made her look. He made her look like a child. <laughs> you know, I, I I think about it and I go, it, it would be it'd be similar to me hiking in the woods with a ten year old kid. That would be the size difference between yeah. them. And wow. and he was terrifying. And, and yeah. did he have the similar hair patterns that she did, or, or was or is this different? I would say he had more hair on his face. Um, he had a beard. Um, I, 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 I call it a big biker beard. <laughs> um, you know, so he definitely had facial hair. Um, as far as the, the hair, as far as it, it looked similar styles of hair, but... Whereas she looked very well groomed, he did not. He he looked more ratty and looked more like he had tangles in his hair and brush in his hair mm. and and looked like he was unkept. You saw genitalia. 
I did. I did. I did not want to, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but I did. Um, if, if he, if he understood me, I would have teased him about it, that it wasn't as big as his body size. Um, you know, I would have given him some locker room talk and kind of teased him about it, but <clears throat> it was oddly shaped. It was very pencil thin, um, not very long, but very pencil thin. Um, so, I mean, he was definitely a male, <laughs> but yeah, because like her, she you, you could see where her her genitalia would be, but you couldn't see it through the hair. He he was out in the open. You could see it. Um, but it, I, I, I know it sounds weird, but it, it reminded me of a pig's penis because it was long and skinny and, and, but not as, not as thick or as long as his body size. It didn't match. Yeah. It what, co- it didn't what color was it? <clears throat> kind of a reddish pink to it. Um, so- well, that that probably created a contrast between this dark black hair. And yeah, that. yeah, o- almost looked like, <clears throat> and and this this is what I, I say it's weird is it almost looked like it should have a protective coating around it, like it shouldn't just be out in the in the open. Which wow. then, having thought back on it now, um. Having found the blood, I go, she was in heat. He could probably smell it. He was ready to mate. She probably wasn't. She, she, I don't think was in the mood or wanting to be his mate, but, or had any interest in mating, but he definitely did. And I had interrupted something. Wow. Dang. You know, I'm I'm glad I interrupted it where I did and didn't stumble upon it happening because then it really probably would have ended badly. Yes. What what do you think caused him to <clears throat> to see you? Because excuse me, because and your dog didn't bark at her, did No, no, my dog didn't really bark. He didn't even really <clears throat> did it, the dog didn't even really growl. Um I, I think he, I think he was looking for her. Okay, that's kind of. I, I, so, my, my my theory is that in the chimp world with chimpanzees, um, they're they're different from lions and a, other species where they kick the male young males out of the pride. Chimpanzees kick young females out. And the young females will go and find other groups to breed with and join their family groups. Um, and it, it's one way to keep the line from becoming inbred. Right, right. Um, so was she a lone female looking for a group? Yeah. Or was she new to the group? Or was this just a, a male that wasn't going to take no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> what a scary thought. I mean, I just hate the thought of that. I hate the thought of her being, you know. Treated that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hate the thought of her um, trying to get, hide from this particular male and not having a choice, you know, as a as a right. female. Right. That's terrifying. Yeah. It, it, it is a terrifying thought. Um but I, I would say that obviously by her size, hiding was the best option because fighting, she'd lose. Yeah. He, he was just too big. He was too scary. Yeah. Too much of a threat. Yeah. The uh, contrast <laughs> the contrast between the two of them is so amazing. Um, she is beautiful. I mean, she's she's I, she's obviously young like much younger than he is yeah so i i would i would obviously putting human right. human age on him um i would say she's in her early 20s early to mid 20s he was probably late 40s 50s you know 
Um, he was an older male. He'd been around. <laughs> um, he he definitely had battle scars. Um, as as I, the only thing I could think of would be fights with other males, uh, be it for you know breeding or territory. Yeah. Uh, but he had some scarring. Um, where where were his scars? Uh, so he, he had one on his on his chest that. That was kind of, it was kind of in its own right terrifying because it was big enough and looked like it would have been a deep wound that, that if it would have been a human, it would, it would have killed him. Wow. Uh, and, and one on its face over, over an eye that, that made me go, you almost lost an eye to something like something hit you in the face. I don't think a deer did that. I don't think, you know, you did that while you were hunting. Uh, but I, I, I also, he didn't have claws like a bear. So it obviously wasn't a bear that hit him in the face, you know, or claws that hit him in the face. What hit him in the face? What hit him on the chest? Where'd these scars come from? Are they, do they use tools? You know, that, 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 that's the question that I lean to is, is do they use antlers off of deer that have fall on the ground for things? Do, do they use tools to hunt? Mm -hmm. Do they use tools to fight? Yeah, it's a really good question. We, we don't know, but he had enough scars on him to make me go, that, that, that's not from just being punched that's not from being slapped you know that's not having some hair pulled out that that came from something bladed you know be be sharpened rock or or obsidian or an antler a slicing motion it, it wow it was it was confusing and terrifying at the same time so the one on his the one on his chest had it healed? Is that right? Like had it yeah, it it had healed, um, but it was it was long enough, and you, you know I I have scars, and you can usually tell by a scar that by looking at it as to how deep the scar pretty much was, yeah, and and it it was a deep wound, um, but it had healed. Um, you but you could definitely see the scarring. And wow, that's incredible. I, it, yeah, it ter it terrified me. It it is. I, I I had the thought while I was looking at him about my gun, and I I, I looked at how big he was, and I said, "My gun's not going to do anything to protect me at this point." Um, about the only way. It's going to save my life is if he grabs a hold of me and I can put the muzzle to like an eye socket or right up against his head. Otherwise, yeah, it, I don't yeah. know if it's yeah. going to penetrate his, his thick hide. Right. Oof. And, and, you would, and I, you'd, you'd probably be dispatched before. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, and more than likely, he would, it would have pissed him off more than it would have done anything to help me. Um, and then I, I thought, well, if, even if I unload a whole clip on him and, and a miracle happens and I hit him in a vital area and he dies, what's the female going to do? Yeah. Is she going to protect him? Is she going to be on top of me before I can reload? I don't want to shoot her because she wasn't a threat to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad it didn't go that way. Oh, my gosh. I, I think the only thing that honestly saved my life was I didn't react or act like a human. Um, that saying, humans shoot first, ask questions later, a lot in the wilderness. Yeah. Um, I didn't go for my gun. I curled into a fetal position. 
I treated it as if it was an encounter with a, a grizzly bear. You know, I didn't treat it like, oh, I got a gun. I can just shoot at him. Right. No, I, I weighed out that situation and it was not going to protect me. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that's going to protect me is if he looks at me and goes, he's not a threat. I don't have to kill him. I yeah. can see intelligence in him. I can see intelligence in her enough to go. He knew a threat from a non-threat. And here's a guy that's willing to curl up into a, a, a ball, essentially. Well, that doesn't impress my lady. That doesn't impress <laughs> my females. He's no threat to, you know, he's no threat to my, my alpha male yeah. way. And, and I think that's the only thing that saved my life was, was the fact that I didn't challenge him. I didn't stand my ground. I did what, what a smart human should do. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I think you're right. And I don't know how it came to you to, to throw the apple. I mean, most people are just, would be so frozen in fear that they wouldn't even be able to move. I think it's amazing that you even had that thought and that you pulled that off. You know, I thought, and, and, and it, it, it sounds funny, but what started playing through my head was again, Harry and Henderson. <laughs> and there, there, there's the scene where he's trying to teach Harry how to sit using <laughs> the sugar cubes. And I go, man, if, if if I can make this creature like me, who knows? Maybe I can I can become the next Jane Goodall and be welcome into their family group. Yeah, that's not going to happen. He's not welcoming me into his family group anytime soon. But it it caused enough of a I would say a, a distraction from okay. Here's this guy. Is he a threat? Is he not a threat? Yeah. Why is he giving me food? Like it, th it threw enough confusion in there for him to settle down. To not to go with what his instinct was, which is opportunistic. Oh, take him and the dog. Def definitely not what he was expecting for sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely not. I, I was not what he was expecting. Um, you know, I'm not a big guy. Um, I will say I have seven second degree black belts uh, in martial arts, in different martial art forms, and they would not have helped me. It, it was a fight that I did not want to be in. I knew I would lose, and I, I, look, I can look on it now and laugh about things like that at the time. No, I'm sure. I was terrified. I... And, and I, I've said to people, I want to have another, I want to have more encounters with them. But I, I never want to be 15 feet from one again, ever. Yeah, that's ridiculously close. I'm like, oh my gosh. Did you smell anything? I know someone would be wanting to yeah, know. So I, I did not have uh, any type of odor. Did I, there, there was no, no odd smells or anything like that. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've heard people talk about a foul smell. I didn't, I didn't get that. Um, which then leads me to think that the smell isn't something that is an all the time thing. Yeah. Maybe the smell is something they do to intimidate mm -hmm. like so. or, or scarce scare, uh, you know, other predators off? Or is it just some sort of musk that they use for mating? To yeah. Attract? yeah. I, I don't know, but it, I couldn't smell them. And, and I was definitely close enough and the wind was blowing at me, towards me. So I, I could definitely, you know, um, I could definitely smell stuff, but not, not yeah. a foul smell, not a bad odor. Um, you know, I'm sure yeah. he didn't I'm sure you didn't smell like, you know. Yeah. You and know. if the if the wind was blowing in your favor, that may be why um 
they didn't like she didn't win to you or or he didn't win to you to, you know to correct you know yeah. why they didn't notice me right away coming up the trail is that yeah i was walking onto the wind and and, and instead of with it and you know if if you did have a foul smell i would have smelled it my dog right. would have smelled it. um but obviously my dog smelled something something um that alerted her to that there's a predator nearby and she was terrified. So she, so she, when she alerted, that's kind of where you like, cause you were, she was in front of you and you were behind her. So when she alerted, she just stopped. She just stopped. And I had walked up next to her and I was, and, and I said, you know, I smacked my leg and said, come on, girl, come on, let's go. And that's when it stood up. So it was, it, you think it was, oh, it was squatted down behind that bush. I, I think it was squatted down behind the bush. Um, and and you, I, I think, honestly, you know, man, manzanita bushes are edible. Um, the, the, the flowers on them are edible. Uh, mm. A lot of parts of the bush are edible. Um, plus, they, they attract a lot of other creatures that can be eaten, you know. So... Yeah. Was she using it as a hunting blind? Was she just hiding behind it from the male? What? A lot yeah. of different questions that I have for her. You know, obviously, yeah, she can't answer me. But and you didn't see any other people that day. Like there were no, there was. You know, I passed one car on 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 the main highway going up there, um, coming the other direction. I I didn't see anybody. There wasn't any cars uh, when I made the first turn off. And there wasn't any cars on the logging road. There was no one up there. And I would say the closest town was, as the crow flies, 30 miles. Wow. So, you were way out there. Yeah. So it's, it, for me, it's, it, you know, it, 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 it goes, okay. Yeah. It, it could be a person in a costume. But what are the chances that you have the tallest person? ever to play in the WNBA and the tallest person male ever alive, both wearing million dollar costumes yeah. running around in the woods, 30 miles from the nearest human. Yeah. Waiting for some human to come up a, a, a logging road. That's probably not even yeah. used, right? Is it? Correct. It was no longer in use. Um, you know, it, it was clearly in a state of disrepair that it, hadn't been used in quite a while it yeah. was pretty overgrown um why would <laughs> obviously it can't be a person obviously it's not a bear because it didn't have a snout it didn't have ears on the tops of its yeah. head yeah um yeah. it didn't act like a bear it didn't look like a bear yeah uh, no, my dog no. didn't treat it like a bear yeah um yeah. and and yeah the Bears do walk on their hind legs, not for far yeah. distances, yeah. and not at a hundred yards sprinting down a hill. Right. Yeah. And no. Bears that, don't get that, that big around here. Yeah. If fifteen, <laughs> if fifteen feet, there's no way that you could miss what this was. Yeah. There, yeah. There's no way. I I I knew what it was. Uh, as far as it's not a bear, it's not a mountain lion. It's yeah. not a person. It's not a person in a costume. You know, it, it's not a hallucination because my dog's reacting this way. I, I knew what it wasn't. I didn't know what it was. I didn't yeah. know what I was looking at because what I'm looking at isn't supposed to exist. Every science book says that they don't exist. Every human that thinks they know something says they don't exist. But obviously, they do. Obviously, the Native Americans are right that they do. Obviously, every Native culture on Earth has a name for it. So it must be something real. Yeah. And I happen to have seen it. And I'm glad I had the experience. And I'm glad it happened to me and not someone that was dumb enough to shoot at it. Um, but it still is a horrific experience. <laughs> as for as good as it was, it was horrific. Um, cause it ruined a lot of good things for me. You know, I, yeah. I used, like I said, I used to backpack all over those mountains. I used to 
you know, hike for for a day into the mountains, fish, stay the night for three days and hike back out on in remote upper, yeah. you know, alpine lakes and stuff like that. Yeah. I used to solo camp. I don't do that stuff anymore. I don't want to have another 15 foot away encounter with, with whatever this is. And what if next time they're not right going to let me off the hook? Yeah. Yeah. It, once you know, you can't, I mean, once you've seen what you've seen, you can't, you can't unsee it. You can't no, pretend no. that it didn't happen and that they aren't out there. I mean, how do you look at the woods now? Like if you're just driving in your vehicle, do, are you always looking in the woods? I'm always <laughs> looking at the woods. Um, I'm always going, you know, there's probably some, some right now watching us. Um, and I think there's more of them than people think there are. Like you so know, too. I'm not, I'm not one of those people that, that goes, oh, there's only one or two of them in the woods. <laughs> well, that's, that can't be because I'm in California seeing them and there's some in Washington seeing them. There's people in, you know, Texas seeing them. There's people on the East Coast seeing them. <clears throat> there's more than them that people think. Um, okay. There has to be a, a large enough population to have a breeding population. Yeah. Um, they have to be intelligent enough to avoid us as, for as long as they have, as well as they have. Um, but I'd be willing to bet that they are more present and around people more often than people realize. I think so too. Um, when you're hiking, when you're camping, when you're fishing, yeah. you know, they are probably around and you don't even realize that they're around um, because I, I'll tell you what, at a hundred yards through the trees, if, if the large male would have been squatted down, I would have thought it would have a tree stump and I would have never paid no mind to it. Mm -hmm. Had she not stood up, I would have passed right by that bush and not ever looked at it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's, what's truly terrifying is I got within 15 feet of her before I made a sound that made her stand up. Otherwise she wasn't going to stand up. She wasn't going to move. She wasn't going to make herself known. So I don't think that obviously I don't think it, people's skill that they that they get sightings you know i don't i don't think oh you're a good tracker you can track one now that's that's not why you had an encounter i also don't think that they willfully show themselves to people mm -hmm. i think they're curious of us mm -hmm. but i think they're ultimately afraid of us too because they see what we do to each other they see what we do to other animals they're terrified of us um and I think that when an encounter happens, it's, I hate to say miracle, because it's, you know, I don't think it's ordained by God that happens, but I, I definitely think it, it's like winning the lottery. Um, it's a lottery you don't necessarily want to win, but you, you, you win the lottery. Um, and I have told my encounter to, a couple of people and I either get oh you you're crazy you, you, you just saw a bear or I get oh man I wish I could see one that close no you don't no no, no you don't yeah. it's, it's not fun it, it wasn't in you know these aren't giant I, I laugh because I think about the movies all these movies out there about them and they're either Friendly forest hippies <laughs> that just want to befriend you and help nature, or they're ravenous killers out to murder. Right. They're they're not either. They're not either thing. You know, they're not big friendly forest giants that just want to be your friend and will save lost puppies and lost kids in the woods. No, they're they're opportunistic predators that. Do they see people as prey? I'm sure they do it sometimes. 
Yeah. All the time, no. I don't think we're an active prey source for them, but you have, you have a, you know, a young woman hiking alone in the woods. Yeah, she might be a prey. Yeah. You have a young child that runs 100 yards up the mountain and then disappears and has never seen him. He might have been snatched. Yeah. I, I do think they snatch people, but I don't think that they are out to get us. But I don't think that they're these giant friendly creatures that just yeah. waiting for us to be, you know, the a Harry and the Henderson moment. No, that, that's not who they are. That's not what they are. Yeah. They're they're they know what we are. They know what we're capable of. They avoid us on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, there, there's a reason why almost every Native American tribe has a name for them, has stories about them, has mm -hmm. stories about them abducting children, has stories of them about them coming down from the mountains at night into the villages and and stealing food. You know. There's stories that go back yeah. centuries about yeah. these things. Yeah. And they're never once described as, oh, I was lost in the woods and, and it saved me and it helped me find the rope. No. And and it, it's usually quite the contrary. Yeah. But they're they're not out to get us at the same time. They're, you know, it is my irrational fear of Camping alone in the woods. Are they always going to, you know, see me alone in the woods and come and try to snatch? No. Yeah. If, if he wanted to snatch me and kill me, he could have killed me easily and I could have disappeared that day. Right. <clears throat> Same with my dog. Yeah. I, you know, I think they're a, a lot like people in, in the sense that they have personality, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are probably some that are very aggressive towards people. Mm -hmm. and probably prey upon people more than other groups. Right. You know, there are some that probably prefer to hide and run and and, and disappear when they're around people. Um, Just all types, like you said. Yeah. So what do you... And I don't think your fear is irrational at all. Just, <laughs> just say <Yeah>. it. <laughs> I think it's perfectly irrational. Um, what, what do you think they are? I mean, after seeing two of them, at 15 feet. So, <clears throat> for a long time, I took a religious approach to it. Um, being a youth pastor, um, you know, not, not to get too religious on your show. Um, oh, that's okay. But, but when Satan fell from heaven, <clears throat> he came to corrupt God's creation. Um, humans love to think that we're the only thing he corrupted. Uh, that 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 he only messed with Adam and Eve. Well, I think he messed with a lot of things, and that's the reason why there's all sorts of reports about half man, half beasts out there. Be it from mermaids to minotaurs to centaurs to mm -hmm. dogman to to what have you, all over the world. Every culture and, and oftentimes has multiple stories of different creatures that they've encountered. Right. Um, so there's that one theory there that I, I could could possibly be true. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Um, but then there's the side of me that goes, maybe they're a branch of human, you know, that that we thought went extinct. That we have fossils of that right. that that our scientists and our our brilliant thinkers go, oh, it died out hundred thousand years ago. Maybe it you think it died out, just like all the other animals that you think went extinct that have come back from the dead all of a sudden. You know, yeah. maybe they aren't as plentiful as they once were, but I don't think they went extinct. I, I think it either some branch of other early hominid mm -hmm. or it's an abomination or maybe it's a mixture of the two. I, I don't, right. I don't know. Yeah. You know, nope. 
Yeah, but I appreciate you sharing your thoughts, though, because, I mean, seeing them as close as you did, and then the experience that you had, I mean, you're as, you're as knowledgeable as, as, well, I mean, a whole lot to me, that a lot more knowledgeable than a lot of these people who call themselves researchers. I mean, yeah. you have firsthand experience looking into the eyes of not one, but two. And, and seeing that there is a difference between them, there is a difference between the way they act, even from male to female. There's a difference in their mannerisms and, and where he was willing to stand his ground. He was willing to fight. She wasn't. She was curious. Yeah. But she, she didn't want to fight. She didn't want a problem. She didn't want confrontation. She was in shock that I was even there, and and I was in shock that she was there, and it was more of a curiosity, um, you know. I, I I think that people tend to, even researchers, <laughs> I, I I love the term researchers, um, <laughs> think that they're experts. And, and I, I, I'm sorry, but mm -hmm. until you've had 20 years with one in a lab studying it, you're not an expert. You know, you, we don't even know what all they eat. We don't even know if they have one stomach or, or multiple stomachs like other animals. We, we don't know enough about this creature yeah. or this, this species yeah. to, to, to rule anything out, um, yeah. you know. Obviously, I, I rule stuff out. Um, do do I think they come from the stars? No. Do I think they pass through interdimensional portals? No, I don't. Um, could they? Possibly. I mean, anything's possible until we yeah. get some solid research on them, where we spend enough time with with a one or multiples of them and get enough a big enough research study of them to, to know for sure what all are they capable of do they have can they see in at nighttime like tigers and other animals yeah do do the eye shine that they put off is that that something that they put off or is it just a reflection that they've yeah. built over time you know I know we have so many questions. We yeah. have so many questions and we want to bully the community. <laughs> and, and, and that's, that's why I've been reluctant to come on certain programs is yeah. the bullying by the community. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> even within the community itself, Oh, yeah. um, you, you, you have two camps, you have two main camps, you know, you, you, you have, it's a species, and then you have the camp that leaves it interdimensional and, and mm -hmm. uh, orbs, and they travel in orbs. Both are plausible. We yeah. don't know. Right. But for one side to pick on the other side and yeah. call them complete whack jobs, because that's what they tend to believe, well... You don't know what their experience are, right? I'm sure. I'm sure if I would have saw orbs floating above their heads, I would probably have that feeling too. <laughs> I didn't have that experience, so yeah. you know, mine was purely natural. So I yeah. go, I look towards the natural side of it. Yeah. yeah. But until the community itself can stop bickering, stop yeah. thinking that that oh, because I was on a TV show about Bigfoot, I'm an expert and know everything and can't be wrong. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. No. And there's well, people who have been researching these things for 30 years and still have never seen one. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at, at a guy, you know, rest in peace, John Bindernagel. You know, I've read his books. <clears throat> Here's a guy who was an actual scientist. And took an actual scientific approach to it. Never claimed to be an expert. You have a guy like Jeffrey Meldrum, who is an expert in a lot of different fields, 
but doesn't claim to be an expert in Bigfoot. Why? Because we don't know. You know, I will never consider myself an expert in Bigfoot. I, I have had, you know, multiple encounters, uh, only one this close, <laughs> um, but I've had multiple encounters with them. I have done enough research in the field to know what I think, but it, right now it's just a hypothesis. Right. It, it's just a guess because... Until I Jane Goodall a situation into <laughs> where I live amongst them for for many years, we right. don't know. We don't know. We're just researching and coming up with enough evidence to present to the scientific community to say, yeah. "Hey, look, you need to take this seriously." Right. And right. I, I I I firmly believe that <clears throat> the government knows they're real. You know, don't want to get conspiracy on you, but. No, I, 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 I do too, firmly, 100%. Yeah, I firmly believe that the government knows all about them, knows they're real, um, and willingly pleads the fifth. Um, you know, my wife is a veterinarian, and, and she's asked me, well, why? Why would the government not admit it? Why would they not admit it? And I said, well, <clears throat> the first spaceship crashed in Roswell when <laughs> and it's taken how long for them to admit that <clears throat> there's unidentified flying objects right you know and declassify that i said you don't understand how much it would change the world we live in i said we i i think the government has fully tested what would happen by oh the 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 owl living in Washington state, in Oregon state, that is endangered. Well, what happened? Multiple counties that thrived on logging, shut down, destroyed because they can't log anymore. Right. Over an owl, over a bird. Right. What will they do when they discover and come out that there is a humanoid creature in the woods? Thousands, thousands, right? No more logging. Yeah. No more fishing, no more camping, no more hiking, no more four-wheeling, no more hunting. And they can't protect they can't protect people. I mean You can't. They can't you can't say, Oh well we're we're gonna protect you from the Sasquatch. You can't you can't. Yeah. No, you, you can't. I yeah. mean you 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 look at Yosemite National Park in California <clears throat> has still to this day unsolved missing person cases. A lot. When you talk to park officials, they say something strange. They say there are wild men that live in the park. Why, why is that strange? Well, why wouldn't you say homeless people? Yeah. Or why would you use the term wild men? Hmm. Well, it's because they know they live in the park. They know that they exist. Yeah. But they're not going to say it because you lose all the revenue. Revenue. Yeah. You yeah. know, that that's why the government doesn't admit it. Right. Well, and then and and then if they would admit that they've known about them all this time, uh then the families of some of these people that have gone missing, well they're going to, you know, <laughs> They're like you what knew you about you knew them? about this you knew about that these things were living here and you let you let me bring my family so? yeah you let you let people go in us you know not knowing why didn't you tell people that this was a possibility you tell people you warn people about bears and about mountain lions you know i don't know you, you, why don't you warn people that that have young children right to keep them in eye distance why don't you warn young women to not hike by themselves? Right. <clears throat> yeah. You know, you tell them, oh, don't hike by yourselves. You could trip and get yeah. injured. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't tell them you could get abducted and be used as a breeder. <laughs> right. I, all of that's you true. Know? Yeah. You, no, you, I, you I understand. I understand perfectly why the government doesn't. I mean, I don't like it. But and then some 
for me, it makes no difference whether the government ever comes in forth and says, no. yeah, Sasquatch. I mean, because like yourself, I've seen them. I know they exist. I don't need, and I don't need anybody else's validation on it. I don't need them to be proven. I, you know, I, I wish people would just leave them alone. Mostly. I do too. Yeah. I, I wish, I wish people, uh, I know here in, here in, uh, in Tennessee, it's not, I don't think they're in Tennessee, but there's a group in one of the Southern states, um, that goes out with assault weapons and their whole goal is to kill one. Yeah. So that way they can present it to the scientific community. And, and why do you got to kill one? I know. Now, now what you're doing is you're making a group of Sasquatch that live in that area aggressive. You're making them fear humans to the point of you might increase attacks. Right. You might increase confrontation and problems. Right. Because you're putting them on their on their toes. Right. Yeah. Justified. Yeah, just I agree. Leave them alone. We don't, we don't I mean, there's the <laughs> there's plenty of evidence of people. You know, I, I hear that there's in the comments sometimes. Oh, where's the evidence? Well, there's tons of evidence. If if they know where to look to find it, there's tons. Yeah, there's yeah. there's DNA. Yeah. And 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 I I have sent hair samples in that have come back and <clears throat> clearly show an unidentified creature, but show something really unique when. Because on a DNA strand, what people don't realize is there's a maternal side mm -hmm. and a paternal side. Right. Well, on the maternal side, it comes back as human. Right. But on the paternal side, it comes back as unknown. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that this creature has never been identified. So, of course, it doesn't match anything we have in the vaults Jim of Bay. all the different yeah. animals. Yeah. You know? Does, does, does it have a DNA strand that shared is close to humans? Yeah, but so does a banana. You know, everything that lives on this earth is close to humans and DNA because we're all made of the same stuff. We're all carbon, <laughs> you know, <laughs> of, of course, of course. But we have the DNA. <clears throat> we have blood. We have tissue. We have right. hair. We have fecal. We have footprints, which I think is some of the best, the best evidence there is is footprints. I know with uh, all the dermal ridges and everything. I also think vocalizations are extremely, extremely important. And they're, I think do. they're, I think that, I think that's catching a little, you know, a little ground with the vocalizations, with the spectrograph I, I, that they're doing. Yeah. And I wish there was a way to get a, a, a serious science person to, to study the vocalizations in a way that go, okay. Let's get a linguist in here yeah. that can figure out that, okay, like the Sierra sounds, there's so right. many different in there, then they're so different and they're non-repeating. Yeah. So obviously it's a language. Right. And Scott Nelson has done a tremendous amount of work on that. Uh, he said such a great guy too. <laughs> yeah. There, there are a few out there that are doing, doing the hard foot labor. And, and I will say, <clears throat> I thank the people that have the scientific knowledge to do that type of research. You know, I, <clears throat> I don't, <laughs> I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist. I, I, I don't have the, the scientific mind to, to be able to tell you what the chemical makeups are or understand a lot of that stuff. Um, I do the, in the field research. You know, I know to put on gloves and use sterile stuff when I'm collecting evidence so that right. way I don't contaminate it. Other than that, I don't know how you pull DNA from a hair. I don't understand that. Yeah. You know, my wife does, but I don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad there are some people out there that are willing to do it. Yes, um, me too. I, I just wish that there, there wasn't such a... I don't know, red flag when, when the term Bigfoot is used. Yeah. That, that when you send something off to a DNA, have DNA test done on it, if you say the word Sasquatch or Bigfoot, they won't run it. They won't run it. And I, why? Yeah. Well, why? Yeah. 
that, that boggles my mind, you know, um, that, that the closed mindedness behind it, right. that we won't even, we won't even look at the evidence. Well, why? That's something. Yeah. It's sad. We, we, we have far more evidence for this species than we did for the giant panda. <laughs> yet we still sent out research teams to study it, find it, you yeah. know, why are we so un unwilling to do it for this? Yeah. Well, I think, I think we, you said it though, it, it would change everything. It would. And it that's would probably, <laughs> yeah. And, and that's probably why the government doesn't, uh, doesn't put research teams out because, eh, you know, a huge can of worms. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. You open a huge can of worms. And I will, yeah. I will say with my experience, um, going back to that experience, I, I thank God I had it. I thank God that I got to see, I got my eyes open because that, up to that point, I didn't believe in Bigfoot. I, I watched movies because, you know, there's something fun to watch, but I didn't think that anything like that could possibly exist. And now that I know it does, I'm curious. And it, it, it sparks something in me that that I think a lot of people are missing. You know, that that what else could be out there? <laughs> you know, yeah. We like to think we're on top of the food chain and and that we know everything that's out there. Right. We don't. Right. We don't. Yeah. What else what else is out there? Yeah. And that you that know? is, you know, you're right though, it's a gift. To it walk, really yes, it is to walk to walk through life with open eyes that there's so there's potentially so much more going on out here in this world than than we know, and that's kind of exciting. Yeah, because I I will say it definitely opened my eyes up to to the other cryptids out there. You know, I I will say, that, yeah. Do do I do I think? The chupacabra exists. Oh, I don't know. Probably not. But <laughs> do I do I think that mermaids could exist? Yeah, there's a real possibility mermaids could exist. Why? Well, we only have explored five percent of the ocean, so obviously, yeah, they could exist. Yeah. Yeah. We've only explored, you know, fifteen percent of the land, so who knows what's out there? I totally obviously, agree. Obviously, there's yeah. stuff out there, and there's stuff still being found. And yeah. we're not talking about just small little, you know, amoebas, and, you know, <laughs> we're, we're talking about a whole new species of chimpanzee was discovered in 2004, 2004 in, in an area that was already made a nature preserve, already had tourists coming to it, but had never been discovered. What else could be out there? We don't know. And, yeah. and. I, I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to yeah. know what else could be out there. I'm excited to keep doing research, keep seeing what's out there, keep having experiences. Yeah. Uh, I hope they don't 15 feet. No, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> not, not unless it's a situation where I go hiking and I find an infant Bigfoot that's been abandoned and I can take it home and then raise it. <laughs> I'll do that, but you know, uh, a 10 and a half, 11 foot tall alpha male at 15 feet, I will never want to do again. <laughs> yeah. And nobody can blame you. Jesse, yeah. thank you so much for everything you've shared. And, and thank you for being so patient with me. And thank you for all the work that you've, you've helped me do on this. Because I think um, the faces that of the two that you saw, um, they inform us. You know, they inform they us. Do. Yeah, they do. and I, I think it's so valuable. And I, I thank you for being willing to, to do this with me and to come on the show. Welcome. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad to do it. Um, I want other people to know that you're not alone. If you've had an encounter, you're not alone. There are, there are others that have. Um, yes, you, you may face ridicule. You may face people teasing you about it. Um, but not everybody will. There are people out there that will believe in you. 
and there are enough of us that have had encounters and the community as a whole will support you absolutely find a group absolutely we're out there right thank you again so much and uh You're welcome. and thank you all of all of you uh for being here and supporting sketching encounters and uh just thanks again so much bye-bye <laughs>